Okay, Kermit Weeks here. I am in Southern California, headed to the Chino Airport. As you can see, it never rains in California. I'm currently admiring the fragrance of the Chino area with cow crap floating down the streets. Such a lovely fragrance, I'm just saying. Ode to Chino. Oh, how beautiful. There's the Chino Airport. All the lovely cow maneuver floating. Floating onto the airport property. I'm glad I live in Florida, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, here we are coming into the airport. Planes of fame. Where opportunity takes flight. Lanes of Fame Museum, It'll be 17 outside getting a little bit wet. Rod Lewis is a constellation. We are here to look at the A26 project. I haven't seen it in a year and uh, we'll see what they've done. I know they've been working on other projects. I am in no hurry. Let's see what we got here. Aero Trader. Good morning, Aero Trader. Hey, good morning. It's Kermit at the gate. Okay. Thank you. Man, I may be lucky because I'm telling you, there is a very slight break in the rain. I got soaked at the hotel last night getting in here. And uh, anyway, we shall see what's happening. As one of my Sabre jets that's, I believe, going to a customer in Russia, sold it and they are doing it for a static. There is another one that I believe is also going to the same place. This is going to be interesting. Oh, look at that. Carl coming out with a umbrella. Oh my God, what's happening? Uh, hey, don't put that on your tape. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh my God, so what's been happening? Rain. Rain. How's that song go? Never rains in California. So so what's so what's been happening? I mean, you know, I remember two years ago there was an off chance when I was out here that we were going to run the engines, and then last year. But you know, I know you guys have been busy, and I'm, I, you know, I don't need the airplane. I got I got my hands full in Florida, so. Oh, that's good because I had my hands full here with us. Yeah. Okay. However, thank you. Okay. We good. have been doing some stuff. Okay. We've been working the cockpit, doing instruments, and okay. and the seats, and we'll crawl up there in a few minutes. Uh, current project is the gun nose back here. Oh, yeah, yeah, because we sent you out the six-gun. Right, and that's what we're working on. Right okay, now. great. Oh, that's good. And at some point, I mean, we'll take a look at possibly throwing the, an eight-gun, and then we'll do the glass one with the thing and just to show it next to the airplane, yeah, maybe. Yeah, just display when it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, well. Oh, man, that is looking awesome. So Stuart here has been... Uh, hey, Stuart. <clears throat> ...working away on it. Well, you know, you can blame good him. Good to see you, man. Between you too. Be good, good. Yeah, so tell me what's been happening. So this thing was pretty freaking good shape when we sent it, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, reasonably. Well, there was, was a lot reasonably. of corrosion, but. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was some, okay. Yeah. But man, it's sure looking good now. Yeah. And it just, you know, I always wondered, it seems so, the eight gun seems so symmetrical. Why did they lay this out this way? I don't know. Talk to Douglas. Talk to Douglas. Okay, so there's no obvious rhyme or reason why they did this. Well, there might have been in some engineer's mind, but... Uh, yeah, okay, so we got four on one side, two on the other. Well, it's interesting that we have these other chutes here, and I think this, I read somewhere that there's kind of a universal nose where they could switch around from a 
six gun to an eight gun, and then all it do is change the panel. Really? Yeah. Wire these in there. Well, you know what? Utilized. And that's a bigger shoot too. You know, this might have been one of the cannon moves. Yeah. Remember, they had a cannon in one of them, and that might have been <coughs> the interchange. Yeah, here. that looks like. Uh, yeah. Okay. And there's another shoot over there, but it's not really being used. So okay, we so haven't really researched the cannon thing. Yeah. Okay. So a big shoot there that's not being used. Is this one being used over here? Nope. Okay, so that might have been something else too, so, huh. Possibly for the eight gun setup, because you would have two more guns over here. Right. But the eight gun nose configuration is quite a bit different. Oh yeah, because it's like four and four. And we, you have one here. Where's, yeah. our, where's our eight gun? It's up at Cable Airport. It's up at a friend of ours. We used it for my daughter's wedding as an ice test. Oh really? Yeah. Or is it a deterrent for him to the husband to do well? <laughs> As a reminder. Well that too, but you know. Yeah, okay, all right. Now we just lift the doors up and set ice chests in there and that yeah, would really okay. have your drink. So Yeah, okay, good. Um, Mike's got a hanger up there that's my colleague's got a hanger that's okay. all set up with you know antique and World War II memorabilia all right. stuff. So. Well you're gonna bring it back at Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Well good for you. Congratulations for her. Yeah. So this has been the uh, last couple of weeks we've been working on it. We had a bunch of stuff out for plating, and when that finally came back, then we could get into the assembly mode. So. That's awesome. Well, that's that's going to be cool. Yeah, because this this airplane originally came out of the factory as a gun nose and flew in France in World War II, and then somewhere along the line, they put that bomber nose on it, I think, for a movie or yeah, something. Yeah, that was post-war. That, that was, was yeah. yeah that I mean, it was used in the California National Guard, but they, was it on there in the Guard, or were they used it for the, just for the movie? I think just for the movie. Just for the movie, okay. And that's how I got the airplane, and that's how Challenge got the airplane. Challenge got the airplane from yeah. the Guard. It had never really been in civilian hands until the Air Guard gave us the Challenge publication. Okay. Huh. Which was a good thing, because, you know, if you remember, it still had the turrets and stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so awesome. It had, it had been unmodified, so. Yeah, it was great. In fact, I remember when I was uh, flew the airplane back, came out, got checked out, got a type rating and stuff, and I think I let you and yeah, Tony we'll get a type rating. Right. So that was pretty cool with Bruce Guberman. Guberman, yeah. And uh, anyway, so I was flying back, and I had uh, one guy with me, a mechanic, and we flew to the Ellington Air Show uh, in uh, Texas. And, uh, you know, I was there. It was a big CAF show, and I flew in. And, hell, we got in the back of the damn thing. We The bad, we had the flitters. Switches on, we start, and the damn, all the turrets work. We were like, wow, oh, this is awesome. So Carl's upgrading everything. All the turrets are going to work. Everything's going to be really, really, really cool. Yeah, that's our current project. So okay. we've, we've got a turret expert, a friend of ours, really? uh, Fred Beezer from down in Georgia. He's been rebuilding a lot of these aviation really? aircraft turrets. Huh. And uh, he's going to come out and give us a couple of pointers on some of the electrical that we're having a little bit of problem with. Yeah. So is and they basically operate with just motors? There's no yeah. like really funky tube things or anything. It's just yes. strict. Oh, that is. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's really elaborate. It's the same system that the B-29s had. Them. Okay. Huh. Oh my God. Yes, it was uh, <clears throat> state of the art at the time, but a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I can't remember when I was in here the last time. <clears throat> you know, I didn't. Uh, I didn't really have the, uh, you know, a light with me or whatever but anyway that's the deal and the the guy sits right there and he's got the up and down and left and right right there spins around and periscopes there's one at the top and one at the bottom so you can yep. look through either periscope and look at the top yep. or the bottom so there's a periscope up there and there's one down here where he actually right now it's pointed the other way but that's to keep it from chipping in case he's got it pointed forward yeah we can rotate the position around it yeah yeah, there we go. And the armor plate back here. Unreal. Yeah. Too yeah. cool. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we kind of went through the bomb bay here the last time I was here. Yeah. That's one of the remote turrets. It's a completely remote turret. There's one here, and then there's one up under there with two 50s each. Huh. And Stuart's been working in the cockpit. We've been doing some plumbing and stuff like that. So I should get him over here to get yeah. him over. Yeah, okay. Get you grace. Stuart? Shall I just climb up here? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, we did some gear retracts. The 
first time I was out here. Little bit dirty. Radios in the back there. Yep. The radios installed, uh, we done the hydraulic test, the emergency air brake pressure system is pressurized. We got it tagged so that's why. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, we got all the wiring done for your cow flaps and stuff. We're working on the panels to get the decals done. Cow flaps electric? Yeah. So refresh my memory, what's electric and what's hydraulic on this? Well the flaps are electric. Uh, hydraulic is mainly just the landing gear, um, brakes. And I think that's the so cow flap. Cow flaps are electric, and uh, good. Okay. Pretty cool. All right, we'll just kind of do a little bit of a pass there. We got a lot of original radio stuff, which is not going to be right. working. You know, there's your like the. Uh, identify IFF lights mm -hmm. there, you know, flying at night so somebody doesn't shoot you down if you're a, <laughs> a friendly one. Yeah. So there's like a, like ADF type things. You know, I'm not very familiar anyway, with radio some sort stuff, of frequency or whatever yeah. for something. Um, there, I, I wonder sometimes how this guy has to get around here to adjust some of these uh, frequencies. Yeah, well, those, so, you know, well, unless he's got a... Maybe, or... Yeah, well, you know, that, that's an interesting question. When when this thing flew as a gunship, there was no real reason for a crew member up here. Yeah. Just the guy in the back. So it would have been a kind of a two-position two position airplane. Yeah. I'd be interested to do some research. Mm -hmm. um, originally, when I got the airplane, it had a glass nose on the front because they had set it up. They were going to do some kind of a movie. I still have the script somewhere, but it, they never did anything with it. And... Uh, the uh, uh, there was a set of dual controls in here, which I ended up because it wasn't original. I, I mean, it would have been fun to have to let people fly and stuff, you know. But uh, because it wasn't original, uh, I went ahead and sold it to somebody. And uh, then we found out later, you know, we really need to do this with a gun nose because they had the, you know, it's got the gun packs. Can't see them out there, but it's got the gun packs on the wing. So anyway, this will be kind of a little short. Uh, progress update because we haven't haven't been doing a lot on it but anyway a lot of this was done in the other video we talked about things uh, and uh, anyway so you get a chance to go back and check out the uh, other previous videos we did See, we had to replace the flat motor because it has a, uh, a kinetic brake on it when the electric shuts off it it's, uh, I believe it's spring-loaded and it's supposed to lock the shaft up. Right. And we were having trouble adjusting the flaps because they would always change whenever huh. we shut the flaps off. So we uh, got a new motor and put it in and that was the problem. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Glad that uh, Douglas is still around with some spare parts, huh? <laughs> it's called Aero Trader Spares. Aero Trader Spares, yeah. yeah. We have a pretty good selection of A26 parts. Desert so we storage. Were, uh, we were, awesome. We've accumulated. Uh, it's a fairly complex airplane, actually. Uh, right down to it. Oh, yeah. look at that damn cockpit up there. Of course, probably a third of that stuff is probably irrelevant for today's use. But still, yeah. back in the days, man, the guy had to have been pretty, pretty savvy on everything that was happening. Huh. All right, just a little quick walk around here, you know, looking at lines and cables and hoses and. You know, the engine's uh, 2800s, 2000 horsepower a piece. Got the prop governor's on and rigged too since uh, you were here last. Okay. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's the oil coolers up in there. So I think the gun, there was more gun packs on last yeah, time I was were, here. They were on, but we've taken those off so we can go ahead and do the, the finish. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. They were just up yeah, there. Yeah, are they the back there? We just take a quick Yeah, they're up there on the top rack. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, this is going to be. That's so a big deal, but we got the canvas covers and the nose wheel well too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep the rocks tearing This is going to be such a cool airplane. So these are the covers. So so there's uh you know 450s on each side underneath the wing, and at some point they actually did uh, some guns inside the wing. 
This was later, the early. Earlier one, the later ones they mounted inside the wing. Was that in the war? In yeah. World War II or Korea? No, they had them in the war. Okay. Huh. Yeah, quite a few configurations on the airplane. But it took a while to get it in service. I mean, this thing was designed in the early 1940s, and then it wasn't until 44 that it actually got in service. Wow. And yeah. so, in this particular airplane here, I mean, to, to our knowledge, what's the history? It was built when? Well, it got overseas uh, in 44, Aries. so it was, okay. it was built. <clears throat> I mean, it's got a 40. Here's the other half Aero Trader here, Tony Ritzman. <laughs> what's happening? I sure was good, 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 good. I'm doing awesome. Good to see you. Good. What's good, up? Good, good. Well, I'm trying to say dry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, time who, we've had in our yeah, winter yeah. storm system. Who, who, who would have thought California would ever have a dry county, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is wine you, capital. You, to, yeah, we're just checking things out, looking at the, the gun nose is looking great. Yeah. Parts here for the, I hear the ammo box guns and stuff. There's some internal partitions and oh, stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, now were th those were in the deal? No, but I have them. Oh, you we did? Have. Oh my God! Thank you, Carl. But these were for the eight gun nose. That, the eight gun nose. Okay, so at some point, you know, it'd be kind of nice to throw that together and no, no, we'll get that spiff it up down the road. Probably a lower priority right now. And the uh, the glass nose, probably just stored somewhere. Yeah, stored here. Okay. This was a modification they did on one of the really late A26s. They put them on. No, just kidding. <laughs> B-17 tail. Where's that from? This belongs to Nick Veronica, and uh, it's the late model uh, B-17. D, yeah. Cool. Yeah, the G turret, the, what do they call it, a pump gun, I forget what the name is. I'm not a B-17 huh. expert. But um, we've been working on this for a couple of years at a slow pace, and, and he rounded up some original parts out of a wreck in Alaska for the, the back bell, or pump gun, they call it back there. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so we got all that stuff fitted up and made a few parts and cool. And, uh, so Stuart had been working on that for a while too. Good. And these are the mounts for the wing guns. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So those have all got to be then fitted up. Go underneath the. Yeah, and that's some of the stuff for the uh, six gun ammo boxes down there. Those are the rollers that go in on them. Really? What are, What do these do again? That's the ammunition rollers. Oh. It rolls out on top of those. And hmm. That's pretty cool. Oh my god, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's... Well, I, I know there will be another A26 that's got all the original stuff in it like this. So. Unreal. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many A26s are flying now. Maybe a dozen. Yeah. Uh, but none of them are... And I think, and we, we kind of basically came up with the idea that we're going to do this uh, in a camo with the right. OD, OD and the gray, gray right. bottom, and I'm going to come up with my own nose art because we can't figure out exactly what the what the uh, original nose art was. We can't find any really pictures to go by, so I got a little creative, and I'm gonna, it's going to be a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay. So, anyway. Surely it's not going to be you, is it? No, it's not going to be me. No, that's, that's, <coughs> yeah. Then we're safe. Then we're safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or me. Although, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to keep this very politically correct. You just put Tony and Carl on the nose, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Carl and Tony have been doing 2600 engines as and well as 1820s, which are the rights. Yeah, 182097, the D17. Yeah. And this is an engine that we've done for Collins Foundation. It's a spare for the B25. Which I saw was smoking when it landed in a magazine recently. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, probably within the last six months. Yeah. Huh. Well, I think it's down at Gary Norville's now at American Arrow. Um, but it's in storage right now. We just finished hmm. it. Test ran, test cell ran it, and uh, and he said to sit on it until they need it. Cool. So as soon as they call us, it'll get shipped to to Gary's place, and huh. they'll swap it out. But what we're cool. doing is and, uh, awesome and I'll bet it's been a very interesting learning curve since you started well we've been doing these now about 10 years 2600s, yeah. the 1820s just the last couple of years um, but we've got about well, five engines in process in the shop right now hmm. two 1820s and three 2600s and how many are out flying? About 20. Oh, that's good for you. That's awesome. 
I know at Oshkosh a uh, year before last when I was there with the A20, and we had done those engines also. Right. Um, I think with all the B25s that were there, I think I counted 12 of our engines flying last oh, year at Oshkosh. Oh, that is great. That is good. And so, and uh, so, how, what kind of differences are there between the 2600 and the 1820 that are like major? Well, and what's similar? Well, I mean, the major difference is one's a, a nine-cylinder single row, and the 2600 is a two-row 14-cylinder. Uh, a lot of the parts are interchangeable. Some internal parts. Seriously? Out. Yeah, yeah. There's wow. a lot of stuff that's interchangeable. Oh, that's good. Um, so, I mean, we've accumulated a very vast. Curtis Wright inventory the last couple and of years. And did you end up buying out all the stuff from Nixon? We bought out from Vintage Radials. Yeah. Uh, we bought out uh, a bunch of their, well, we think all of their 18, or their 2600 stuff and, and uh, a good bit of their 1820 stuff that applies to the Dash 97, the hmm. 17 engine. Uh, they're still doing 1820s, the later model ones. We're not planning on doing those. Right. Uh, you know, Albatross and S2s right. and T38s right. and stuff like that. So. Uh, they held back a, uh, the parts that would be applicable to those engines that they're still doing. But, hmm. but then we acquired another inventory that was part of the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force inventory that hmm. got sold off a number of years ago. We acquired that inventory uh, from CMP Aviation up in Minneapolis. And we're in the inventory sorting process right now. I mean, this is oh my God. I mean, we've got crazy crates of parts and we're going through them and, and uh, sorting them. And, and inventory and stuff and putting the stuff on the shelf in our containers out here that we have for uh, the parts that we use regularly. The stuff that uh, there's too many of and or doesn't apply to right. working on, uh, we're boxing back up and going back into our storage hanger. Puts a whole new meaning to loads of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So so it's kind of interesting. One, one of the things I, I, I kind of want to ask you about is, and we touched on it the last time I was here, is you know, at some point, this, the piles are getting less. There's less and less people doing it. And it's like, I think we were talking about 3350s the last time. And it's like, at some point, maybe somebody's not going to be doing it or something. Well, Where, where's it going? Is, well, certainly a possibility. I mean, Precision Engines is out of business now, and they were doing a little bit of everything. Where were they out of? Uh, Seattle. Seattle, okay. Yeah, huh. We're putting an 1820 together in the shop right now in the, in the assembly room. Javier working on the nose tube. Wow. Why is that copper plated? That's what Curtis Wright did originally. For, for, for what reason? For some yeah, kind of. Oh, anti corrosion. Okay. So you're going to come in here and film the worst operation there is. I know. It looks like y'all got your, real, your hands case full. together so you can listen to us cuss. Yeah. <laughs> So see Amazing. All right. Well, then I won't bother you for very long. And y'all go back to the silver CAD and everything. Yes. Since uh -huh. you got the right. yeah. option. Right. Yeah. I, I tell you what. Seeing one of these engines with gold CAD would be really funky. <laughs> you know. I know there's somebody out there that would probably do it, but uh, and they would probably be from California. I'm just saying. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> We do have some ethics out there. Yes, 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 yes. All right, cool, man. It's been awesome seeing you. All right. Good, good, good. Appreciate good it. And right. uh, look forward to uh, hearing about the progress as we go. All right. All righty. So let's see if I can get out here. It's not raining too bad. Let me try the best I can do to get out here. Oh, my God. Anyway, so not a big update, but uh, certainly things are slowly happening. We both got like really major big projects happening and uh, anyway, cool. Over and out, Chino. <laughs> Love the smell. Yeah.